Hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host Kristen and today we are going to do a smaller and improved granny round. You will need your 24 peg loom. I'm using a nifty knitter here and I'm showing you a couple of granny rounds that I've made in and a couple of different yarns. Depending upon the yarn that you get, it's gonna come out a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger. I've gone from three inches to four inches in these different type of yarns. This is a chenille type. This is actually um, a ruffle yarn. It's a sachet from Red Heart. This is actually the back side. And then here's the front side. And uh, this is the breakdown that we're gonna do. We're gonna do a cable cast on. Um, also, some people call it a crochet cast on. I have a video, um, I think I called it a crochet cast on at the time. And we're gonna do a purl row right after, and an e-wrap row, another purl row, and then we'll go straight into the decrease. Now, if you're familiar with my other granny round, um, I, I only show you doing one purl row, but if you'll do um, every other one, then you'll get this nice ridge here, garter ridge. And in the 24 peg case, we're actually going to skip that last e-wrap row. But in the regular granny round, if you're in a 36 peg, you're going to have another one. So let's get started here. We need a number six super bulky yarn here. We're going to make a slip knot here. Take the back over the front and over again. And we're gonna grab a crochet hook. Now I've just switched so that you can see the contrast. Um, whatever works best for your yarn is what you're gonna use. This one is an eye, uh, a different way than I'm gonna do it today. We're gonna do a, um, a modified way of putting our slip knot on. We're gonna go from the top side and under and put our slip knot on this peg right here. This is just a holding peg. Let that tail fall down, right there. Okay, lay your loom down. We're gonna wrap our working strand over and around the first peg. This will be your first peg. We're actually gonna go around in this direction, which is counterclockwise. If we were looking at the front of this, it's gonna go around this way. But when we do the cable cast on, we're gonna work from the inside of our loom. All right. Grab your crochet hook and we're going to put it behind this working strand between the working strand and the back of this peg and then grab this working strand from the front side, pull it through and come around. Now we're going to grab it again on the other side of peg two, wrap it and come around and pull through. Now, you may need to do some twisting action here. You're going to wrap the working strand, pull through here, turn, and come through that hole. Let's try that again. Go between the pegs, wrap it. You want to turn your hook and pull through. Now, you can do this with your fingers uh, on the 36 six peg loom. I'll actually do it with my fingers because it's uh, a wider spacing between the pegs. So if you will go all the way around the loom, and if you drop it, just pull it out, grab it again. Okay. Oops. Now I'm going to show this to you in uh, hopefully real time. I don't think I'm going to cut anything out. Don't mind me, I'm just banging my table here. Go ahead 
and wrap this around here like that. And then when we get to this last peg and the first peg, go ahead and put this last one on here. Now, it may seem unconventional, but this working strand is coming from this last peg, so that's how I'm gonna do it. And I'm gonna go ahead and knit these together here. I've got that a little tighter than I want. And if it's too tight, then you can take this off here, this and let it hang. Okay, now you don't need this and you can work this in to your row or you can work it in later or leave it if you're connecting them. And if you um, need a video on how to connect these rounds together, um, look for um, how to connect granny rounds um, by single crochet that are, it's on my channel now. So we're gonna go on to the next row and we're gonna purl. Make sure these are at the top. All right. Purling. If you need a quicker, uh, if you need a video on how to do that, be sure and visit my channel. I'm going to show you a quicker way to do it today. We are going to pull up a couple of these. All right. So I'm going to do like three or four of these, pulling them up. Now I'm going to pull this one off, put it back on. And I'm going to tighten up by pulling this loop. That one's done. Now pull the second one off and put that loop on. Tighten that up. Pull this one off. As you're putting it back on, tighten the working strand. We just did three purls. Let's do that again. Pull up your working strand and make a loop. You could even do four. Pull this off of here, put it on, tighten it up, pull the old off, put the new on, pull the working strand, pull this off, put this back on, tighten it up. This strand is getting longer so you can just pull it, tighten it up, and pull this one off. Okay, let's do that again. We can do three or we can do four, whichever one is preferred for you. This first row is going to be a little tighter because of the cast on. If you noticed, I have marked my pegs if you've seen some of my videos before. And I have divided my loom into six sections. Uh, I'm sorry, four sections of six. And each number one in each section has a red peg. So this is the regular way to do a purl. It's a little slower, right? So we're just gonna do a couple at a time. One, two, three. I hope I'm not going too fast. I wanted to show this being faster and um, I'm trying to do it in real time unless, a, unless I have someone interrupt me here. I'm just going to keep going. We've only got three left. This next row we're going to e-wrap. Alright, 
could push those down. The other quick method to doing pearls, especially if you're alternating in a garter, is to do an e-wrap row, go ahead and wrap it, and then instead of going around and knitting off, we're going to, oh, I always lock in this last one here so it doesn't go anywhere. And now we're going to knit off and then purl. But I'm gonna do what I just did while ago and do three at a time. So I knit off three and then I'm gonna get three ready to purl. One, two, three. There's one. There's two. There's three. I am doing two rows at the same time by doing this. I'm doing an E-wrap row and then I'm doing a purl row. So did you see that I E-wrapped? I finished knitting off the three E-wraps and now I'm doing three purls for the next row. This works because I've already got the strand went all the way around for the whole thing. Um, this technique is not new. Acela Phelps um, has it on purling sprite of how to um, do a quick garter stitch. Actually, I can't remember what the name of the video is off the top of my head, but she shows how to do that. And I'm just speeding it up. Whoops, sorry. I'm just speeding it up by doing a few at a time. If you're trying to turn a bunch of these out and you're in a hurry, this would be a way to go. Okay, done three more. Here's one of the sections right here with the red peg. I like switching out the pegs because uh, stitch markers can get in the way. At least for me they do. And red, or that contrasting color is so much easier to see than a little bitty round thing or a piece of tape sometimes. Not all looms will let you do that. Okay. One, two, three. Pearl, pearl, pearl. And we're on the last three stitches. And remember, I knitted off that last one to lock it in, the very the 24th peg. And now we're gonna purl these stitches. So we just completed two rows. So we had our cast on, we had a purl row, we had an e-wrap row, and we had another purl row. 
And now with this last stitch being a purl, we are ready to move on to our decrease. All right, so we have four sections of six. Starting at this holding peg here, I'm actually working my way uh, clockwise, and I've got, this is my number one peg, two, three, four, five, six, and when it starts again at one, I mark that peg, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, all the way around the loom. We're gonna move all of our evens over to our odds. We're gonna start on the two for this round, and we're gonna move this over. Oops. So we're moving the two over to the one on all sections. Two to the one. Usually, uh, if you're doing the, um, the 36 peg, it's an E-wrap row. And uh, I kept moving this because I was thinking I had an E-wrap that I had to unwrap. So <laughs> I was looking at a little funny. Um, but on the 24 peg, it's necessary to eliminate that row. So go ahead now that the, all these are moved over, wrap all the remaining pegs. And when you come to a skip one, just go ahead and skip it. And come around here and wrap. Skip, wrap, 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 skip, wrap, 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 wrap skip and then wrap. Now we have um, this last peg here that's going to have two pegs, you know, two loops going over one. And then work your way around the loom. Two pegs, two, uh, two stitches over one on the ones that you moved. Okay, you can push those down. Okay, now we're gonna move all of our fours over to our threes. And that was an E-wrap, so now you're gonna see me untwist that. Take that, move that over. Move it over. Alright, so now we're going to wrap all the remaining stitches. You should have wrap, wrap, skip, wrap, skip, wrap, 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 skip, wrap, skip, wrap, 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 skip, wrap, skip, wrap, wrap, wrap. And this one I didn't move. That's why it's good to kind of get that rhythm going. Alright, now we can knit this off right here and go ahead and knit over on the remaining row. And depending upon your yarn, it might be easier to knit off than this one. This one's, you can see all the little plies in it. Sometimes it's not as easy, but I really like this yarn. I think it shows up really well. You can see my see my stitches. Ooh, I split the yarn. Shh, don't tell anybody. All right. Nearly done. Nearly done. Okay, the last two over one. And now we can push these down. And when you're done with that, I'm going to move over. And again, I'm trying to show this as quick as it can be. I'm not trying to make it a super slow tutorial today. I've had people ask, how, how long does it take you? Well, it might take me a little less time than this, just because I'm not filming and I'm trying to talk and lean over a camera. But this is pretty real time here so far. Okay, so we've moved all these over. Now, you should have every other peg wrapped. So go ahead and wrap these over. And pause your video, please. If, if you're going slower than this, and I understand, it's the first time you're doing it, 
Please pause. Okay, and then rewind if you have to. That's what they're there for. <laughs> okay, so knit that over, and now we've got the remaining stitches to knit over. And we're gonna do a gathered bind off, which is the same thing as a drawstring. to do is not waste yarn especially good if this is a scrap project and you're trying to conserve uh, your scraps go away uh, go away <laughs> go around the loom only half ways a little past uh, half ways and cut your yarn yes cut your yarn all right we're gonna take our loom hook and we're gonna go to the uh, fifth peg over on this section here not the one that it's coming from and pull this through like you're purling, but have it come all the way through. Pull it through again, and you can use a tapestry needle. I just don't believe in it. <laughs> I just don't think you need it. All right, so you're gonna start running out of this working strand here, and that's okay. So when you come to about the fourth one, go backwards and pull off just the ones that you've worked through. Okay. And now you can tighten up on that yarn a little bit and then work through about three or four more. Pull that through. And actually once you get uh, past those, these come off really easy. See, because this is a drawstring you're going to be pulling on this yarn and uh, you don't need all that extra slack. So if you go all the way around your loom, it's okay. You're just using more yarn. And I'd rather use what's on the ball for another, another round. All right, we're coming to this last one. Be sure and pull that through. You've got to get all the loops to go through this working strand. So now we've got that. It comes off the loom. Oops. Here we go. See, it's not much to it, right? So we're going to take it, start pulling it through. See that? Okay. And then you can go ahead and poke it through to the back. Start pulling it. And go ahead and make a knot and you want to kind of guide your knot with your hand and push it flush down here and just tie it off and then I will take my hook and then go through one of these bumps in the back and just start pulling it through and then this part where you did the drawstring through, you're going to have a, a loop on the back and a loop on the front in this section. So when I put a loop, this through here, there um, there's a loop on the back here. So when I pull this through, I'm going to work my way all the way around this center part. And I'll just pull it through every other loop that's on here. And it gives it this nice, even look to it and it hides that extra string that you have yeah, this is just my way of weaving it in you can certainly weave it in whichever way hides the best for you okay now that I've got that all hidden in I'm gonna take my scissors and cut that and then I've got this beginning part here and then you could take that and weave that in okay but if you notice that there is a much cleaner edge to it than you may have seen before and if you want to flip this back over to this side 
you can pull it through this bump here. Make sure it don't split your yarn like I was just going to do. I'm going to pull it back through this bump and then you can work it back through here. I keep splitting my yarn. Shh, don't tell anybody. Okay. take our scissors and cut that and there you have it you have a cute little grainy round and you could take that and stitch it together and uh, you know make lots of different things you need a base for a bag or a top of a little baby hat or um, any number of things a little blanket so thank you for tuning in again to good knit kisses and um, I do want to point out that um, this is a flatter design uh, than my previous granny round so if you will substitute an extra row of pearl in your other granny round and then of course in this one we took out that last e-wrap row only for this 24 peg loom okay if you have uh, if you have the 36 peg loom then you're gonna have one more row of e-wrap before your decrease so Again, thank you for tuning in to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen. Have a great day and happy looming. Bye-bye.